James Watkins, uh, writer director of Eden Lake. Thanks for talking to ObsessedWithFilm.com. Thanks for having me. Um, after penning My Little Lion Gone and now Eden Lake, you seem to have a liking for the, the dark and horrifying. What, what is it about the genre that you like so much? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you know, I, it, I always say that I don't choose the stories, the, the sort of the stories choose me. And it's, it's, that right. it's what's, uh, I guess, uh, in some deep, dark place within me that I'm drawn to that, to that world and to that, have a fascination with uh, extreme stories and things. Drama working within a sort of a survival context, I think, is a very interesting place to be. It's where everything is at its most extreme and primal. Yes, that, that comes out quite well, I think, in the, in, in the film. Um, did you always intend to have the, the hook of our current national obsession with out-of-control youth, or, or did it sort of come from a more general it, it, idea? It, it's, events have really overtaken us, because you know what people forget is how long it takes to make a movie. True. And so I, I started writing the film about three years ago, right. and it was a paranoid fantasy. And then we made the film, and then we started editing the film, and then these headlines start coming out, and then this summer they've just gone into this sort of freeding frenzy. And so it's... It's sort of interesting and unnerving at the same time to see how how events have in some way caught up with the film or, uh, you know, sh sh overshadowed the film. And uh, no, it was certainly never my intention. Um, I thought I was making a edge of your seat scary thriller that had that glanced at issues that interested me. Mm. It, it was a, a, quite a neat coincidence, I think, as it as it came out. Mm. Um, there's also, uh, to me anyway, uh, uh, almost a, a, a wicker man sensibility to the film, the, the closed community, the, the hope to false hope, to, to dread. Um, do you consider the, the legacy of horror when you're writing, or, or do you just prefer to approach everything as a blank slate? I don't consider the legacy of horror consciously, mm. but I'm sure it's there subconsciously. Um, you know, it's the old Bob Dylan quote, you are what you eat. You know, and, <laughs> right. and you know, and it's uh, uh, all those films, particularly a lot of those seventies films that you mentioned. Mm. You know, The Wicker Man, Deliverance, Last House on the Left, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. All yeah. of those films um, are, are obviously kind of in some way embedded within my DNA, and and they come out as influences. Mm. But I never, I never, when I'm trying to write, I try to when I'm trying to write, I try to keep within the the realm of the story. Um, and never say, oh, wouldn't it be neat if we brought this in? But, sure. But, you know, shots, particularly actually when you're filming, I think is, is, is where it's more conscious because you'll say, oh, remember, you talk to the cameraman and you say, oh, remember that shot from such and such a movie? <laughs> the way they track the camera in there, let's try that. You know, that's, that's where I think it's a lot more conscious. Hmm. And uh, as a, a writer, director, how much more difficult was that? Well, it was a big learning curve for me. Mm. I mean, I've written films before, but I've obviously never directed a feature film before, so everything sure. was new, so... Uh, it was a big, a big old learning curve, but it was, it was thrilling. I mean, it was great. It's great to be having written your script, to take it and to take it and turn it into pictures. It's, it's a real delight, and to see what works and what doesn't, and what you need to change, and where you need more economy, mm. and you know, whole swathes of experience uh, were new to me. Working with actors, working with the crew. You know, previously I've been sat at my desk, one person. And now it's me, 70 people saying, so what do we do now? So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a challenge. Yeah. yeah. Is it something you want to continue doing? Yeah, very much. I mean, yeah. it's, I always wrote with a view to hopefully writing myself into the directing business. Right. And uh, for me, writing and not directing is, is, I think at least now, would be somewhat unfulfilling. Mm. You sort of you started the journey and then you have to hand the baton over. Sure, sure. Um, talking of the, the actors, um, Kelly Riley, Michael Fassbender, they, they work really well together as the, the, the couple in danger. And uh, Kelly Riley, in particular, carries the central role with, with a real sort of conviction. Um, how difficult was it to get the casting right? Well, for me, the casting, was, the casting is, is imperative. Mm. Uh, you mentioned Kelly and Michael, but also with the kids, because as we all know, exactly. if, you, if you have terrible child actors in your film, and mm. particularly a film like this, then you're stuffed. Mm. Uh, if people say the kids aren't scary or the kids aren't believable or the kids aren't act well then the whole thing falls down at, at the outset um, but with Kelly and Michael also what I wanted is um, you know the film pushes the boundaries in terms of you know a, a 
uh, taking things to the extreme of, of a plausible situation, but I wanted the casting to be incredibly realistic mm. um, and to play that realism through. And so Kelly and Michael, I just, you know, I think they're two of the best actors around yeah. in this country. They're really classy, quality, intelligent, smart, challenging actors. And um, I didn't want, I didn't want sort of Californian beach ble- beach blonde running in the woods, you know, busty girl. I just didn't want that. I wanted, I wanted. I wanted someone that you could really believe in and, yeah. and, and, and see the story through her eyes. And I thought Kelly and Michael achieved that. Mm. Uh, actually, turning to the, 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 the younger actors, mm. um, they, they seem very comfortable in their roles, um, mm. disturbingly so, which is obviously a good thing. Well, the they're film. acting, you know. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I mean, did they, did they take to the more extreme aspects of their characters easily or, or was it quite hard for them to, to use that savagery? Um, I think, for example, with Tomo, there was moments where Tomo, had, it, you know, it was tough. He had some, he had to do some unpleasant things, and I think he found it, it was, it was, it was difficult. But they know the difference between reality and fiction, and mm. when they cross that line and walk into it, what, 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 what they're so great at is, is embracing it and immersing themselves in it. Um, particularly, I, I think Jack O'Connell is the leader of the gang. You know, Jack's a lovely guy; yes. he's a very charming guy, but somehow he's unable to summon up this kind of volcanic rage. Uh, where it comes from, I don't know, but I'm, 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 it's 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 a wonderful gift as an actor. Yeah, there's um, there's also a, a, a survival conundrum in the film that that I like. Um, what do you do in that situation? Uh, because meeting aggression with aggression mm. might not be the best idea, but mm. being a pacifist in the face of aggression might not be the best idea either. Well, it's it's really interesting going back to those films of the seventies that you mentioned. You know, the Peck, Peck and Pa's obsession. You know, if you look at a film like uh, Straw Dogs, mm. where where you know Dustin Hoffman plays a pacifist, and what does he do when he meets aggression, and is there a violence inherent in man? All those sorts of questions. I think it's a very interesting question in, in response to Eden Lake. How do you how do you respond to violence? You know, Steve, in exactly. a sense, his, his violence. Cut, you know, there's a there's a degree of rage with him, and a degree of his masculinity is threatened. Um, and does he necessarily do the right thing? Mm. So, uh, what uh, what's up next on your plate? Um, I'm I'm talking to various to various people. I'm looking to do probably a more psychological thriller, um, one with uh, a little bit more a little more tenderness, I think, uh, mm-hmm. but more consolation in the ending. Right, because you've just you've been doing some writing on. Descent. I've just done yeah, Descent too. They're editing it about two streets away at the moment. John Harris, who shot the film and who who directed Descent two and who edited Eden Lake, uh, we've kind of developed this this bond, this pact. Right. And Christian Colson, the producer, he sort of put us together, and so we're this little team. And so uh, yeah, John's away cutting away at Descent two. It should be out next year. It'll be terrific. Excellent. Well, we're we're really looking forward to seeing that, and uh, we'll look forward to any more updates from uh, Great. your future projects. Oh, absolutely. But in the meantime, thanks for uh, Great. talking to us. Oh, that's good fun. Thank you. Thanks a lot.